In this MapSuite MVC Edition sample app walkthrough, we're going to show how you can put shape files um, over a Google Map. This can be very useful if you have your own uh, custom data or your own data in shapefile format, but yet you want to still use Google Maps as your base map. And we get a lot of requests for this, so we decided to put a sample together, and this video walkthrough will, will give you a little more information about how you would go about doing this. So we take a look at this sample. Uh, you can see we've got a Google Maps background and I can pan around here a little bit and zoom in and zoom out accordingly. And you'll see that these states are kind of highlighted differently than our Google Maps. Well this data here is actually coming from a shape file and I can turn this off and on via a checkbox in our uh, overlay switcher here on the right hand side of the map. So uh, let's dig into the source code to show how you would build, a, build an application with this type of functionality. So this, uh, this sample doesn't really have any controller source, so we're going to just skip right to the view source here. And uh, pretty much everything's in this code block right here where we're setting up the map. So we've got our typical um, um, lines of code that you see in most of our samples where we're adding the map to the page, setting its size, setting the, the background, and setting the current extent. The current extent merely just tells the map control where to zoom into and these coordinates represent the upper left and lower right corners of that uh, box that you would like to see or that, that view portal you'd like to see in the map. Um, next we're setting the map unit and we're setting it to meters. One thing that is always important is if you're using Google Maps it is in a uh, Mercator projection, a web Mercator, also known as spherical Mercator, and that uh, unit uh, uses meters. So that's also why you will see these coordinates as being a much larger numbers than you may see with uh, typical longitude and latitude coordinates. Um, down here we're just adding a couple map tools to the application for uh, the overlay switcher so it's visible. That's the, the thing that the radio button and the checkbox that we can turn off and off the shape file. And then some mouse coordinates so when we move our mouse around you can see the actual coordinates on the map. Uh, here's where we're creating our overlays and we're just adding this to the, the custom overlays projection. And this sample is actually has two overlays. It has the Google overlay, which is the, the base map. And that's added right here. Uh, we're just adding a Google overlay. We're calling it Google Map. We're giving it the, uh, um, the URI that we want to use. In this case, we're using version 3. And we're telling it uh, we want just the normal type of Google Maps. So if we wanted aerial or hybrid or physical, we would change that enumeration there. So that adds just the base map to the, uh, the map control. Next we will add our shapefile um, and to do that we just create a new shapefile feature layer and we point that to the path of where our shapefile is and it's the SHP file of course. In this case we're using a shapefile that is representing the United States. Next we need to tell the map control how we want the, uh, the shapefile to look when we go to render it. So we do that by setting our, uh, our zoom levels and uh, our area styles. Since this is an area shapefile we need to set an area style. And we're just creating a simple one with some basic colors um, using some RGB values. If you don't want to mess with all the RGB values, you can just also use do area styles dot, and there's an enumeration off of there, and there's like country and different types of area styles already pre-built for you. And then finally, we're going to say we're going to just apply that uh, that style to all the zoom levels. Um, for the sim for the simplicity of the sample, if you zoom up or zoom down, the the shape file rendering is going to stay the same. Uh, this next portion is very important because since uh, Google is in that Mercator projection and our shapefile is in your typical uh, uh, WGS84 geodetic projection, we need to reproject our shapefile to match uh, Google Maps. So that's what this block of code does right here. And uh, we create a new projection object. This is a part of Map Suite. And we set the internal projection parameter string, which is what uh, projection our shapefile is in. And if you're not familiar with ESP, EPSG parameters, you can Google it, but it basically is an easy way to reference uh, several different projections by a number. So this represents, this 4326 you'll see a lot in our samples, represents WGS84, longitude latitude, also known as geodetic or therefore lack of projection. But So this needs to be set to what your shapefile data is in. The external projection parameter string is what you want to go to. In this case, it'll be Google, um, and we've got an enumeration since Google is so popular that you can just say get Google map parameter string. 
If you're curious, uh, Google does also have a number associated with it. I don't know it off the top of my head, but you could Google EPSG, Google uh, projection, and probably get that number and use the same method if you wanted to. Then finally, once we have our projection class set up of how we want to translate the data, we just apply that to the, uh, um, the shapefile layers feature source dot projection property. So that means when the map goes to render it, it knows that we want to go from uh, you know, WGS84 to the Google projection, and it handles it all um, internally after that point. Then uh, we just need to create uh, um, an overlay, and we're going to create a layer overlay in this uh, example that would contain our shape file. And we do that by uh, um, this line of code right here, and then adding the layer to the dot, uh, layers collection. And then finally rendering the map out. So the result of this code gets us uh, the sample here, which you can see has a shape file, and we've got some uh, uh, a little bit of transparency so you can kind of see through the um, the states and still see the background of the Google Maps and then be able to turn it off and on via this um, uh, shape overlay checkbox. So I hope this walkthrough has been helpful. Um, feel free to contact us if you have any questions, or you can also post them on our discussion forums at thinkgeo.com/forums. Thanks for watching.